Hi, I'm Carrie, Hi, and Carrie. I'm going to be talking about indie games really mm. quick. Um, so, uh, indie games are games that are developed without the uh, backing or financial backing of a publisher. So that means that these games are funded by the devs themselves, um, outside investors, including uh, uh, crowdfunding like Kickstarter and stuff like that, or uh, they do get pu picked up by publishers during their development. And uh, indie uh, indie game devs tend to be uh, really small teams, as small as even like a single person. And uh, they're great because, uh, because they don't have the uh, influence of publishers. So the visions and uh, stories that indie game devs tell are uh, entirely their own. So these stories tend to be more diverse. Uh, the creators themselves are more diverse. And the gameplay is, uh, isn't necessarily what you would see from like AAA games. So they can be more experimental, pushing the boundaries of what games uh, can be and can do. And for us especially, because we're so busy, they're great because they're shorter game experiences. <laughs> so if you don't have time for like 80 hours to put into Fallout or something, you can spend an hour or so with an indie game and be done in a week. So uh, play more indie games. Uh, support indie devs, uh, small teams, device, diverse stories, diverse gameplay. And so if you've played a lot of video games, uh, you could try Evil Land which is, it, it's kind of like a tribute to uh, the history and evolution of video games. Or if you want something that's unlike any other game before, you could play Papers, Please, where you are a border control agent <laughs> doing, doing paperwork. Sorry? Is that recent? Evil Land? Um, I think the first one came out maybe three or four years ago. It was no, a, the second one. Was this I one? Yeah. The second no, one? No, sorry, Evil Land 2. Evil Land 2, uh, maybe two years ago? It's pretty good. Um, if you've played FPS games, especially like local uh, multiplayer, and you've had to play in a split screen, you could try Screen Sheet, where you can't see the other players. In order to figure out where they are, you have to look on their screen, basically <laughs> cheating, to be able to shoot them. Um, if you like horror games, you can play Detention. Uh, it's a Taiwanese game. Uh, it is set during uh, the 1960s period of martial law in Taiwan. Great game, great story. Or you could play Never Alone, which is made by Alaskan Native people uh, mm -hmm. about an Alaskan Native folktale. And uh, one of the great things about Upper One Games is that their, um, their leadership team is entirely made of women. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Hyperlight Drifter is my favorite game that came out last year. Um, it's fast paced, it's really hard. But uh, the cool thing about it is that there is no dialogue, there is no exposition. Ooh, yes. Everything you learned about the game is um, environmental storytelling or f through cutscenes. And then if you like games that are as pretty as they are fun to play, uh, try Kentucky Route Zero, which is a point and click game, or Night in the Woods, which is, um, if you're from a small town or ever been like, bored or directionless in life, you will relate to this game. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> and then there's a whole category of uh, programming related games. So you can get into those. Um, I, yeah, I haven't played any of these except for Human Resource Machine, which I think Spencer showed to us a few, yeah, a few a while back. So there's programming related games. 